So, we will do a very short talk about how to contribute federal localization. So, this is aimed to be very easy and short, so you are very welcome to ask your question um, in the chat or in the QA part of the chat, whatever you, you prefer, whatever the, the, the more convenient for you. So, uh, my name is Jean-Baptiste Olcroft. I'm not a linguist, I'm not a developer really, and uh, I'm coordinator of the localization team. So there is no official coordinator, but if you organize things and you take the lead to 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 lead some projects and to lead some meetings and to which up objectives, this is a role you can get in the in the community. So in the past, I've been contributing to a few major work and changes in our community. We changed our translation platform. We moved from Zanata to Weblate. This is a new tool that we deployed at the end of uh, 2019. I also worked a lot on the, at the, the ability to translate the documentation of the federal projects. And a few months ago, uh, I released, with the help of uh, Darknow, uh, a tool to produce some statistics about the Fedora operating system. You can get more information about what I do, who I am, and links how, and, and the way to, to reach me uh, using the, the wiki link that is available. So, uh, let's start by defining what we are talking about. As always, there is the theory and the reality. In theory, localization is the, the idea of adapting a content or a product to a specific location, a cultural group or a market. You don't sell the same way something in France than you will do in India, in Japan or in the US. You adapt to the, the culture of the people you are talking with because they need to understand you. Most of the time you will try to speak their language and they need to understand the references that you will do. If you make a reference to the family, the structure of, of the family is not the same in all countries in the world. In some places, they will totally get you advertisement. In some countries, it will they will just don't understand what you are talking about. Here, when we are doing free software, we are most of the time using translation. We mostly do a translation and a little bit of formatting. We want the dates and currencies to be correctly displayed, but we don't go any further. Because going further requires your software to really be be uh, be able to adapt to the different use cases you want to to display to your users, depending if they if they are in one place of the world or another. And this, most of the time, is not technically feasible with the tools that we have in the open source community. And in parallel of that, there are some local communities, the advocates. The, uh, the ambassadors, etc., that that are doing local events that are that are um, designed for the local uh, groups, and they do it very well. So there are some bridges between what we do as translators and what they do as the local communities, and sometimes uh, the contributors are exactly the same. So what can we translate? First thing that we can see in Fedora as a community project is website. Here you have the Get Fedora uh, pro uh, website that is translated in Farsi. You can see that probably the text orientation is not correct, but you can you can have a, a, an idea on how it looks like. Still in Fedora as a community, you can translate the documentation. Here you have translation in, I think it's Odia, which is a language in India, and the whole documentation can be translated. And the third aspect in, in which you can contribute in terms of localization is what we ship in Fedora as a Linux distribution. The release cycle and the, the, the publication is not the same if you are talking about the documentation, the website, or the software which are embedded in a major release of, uh, of Fedora. Here on the left hand side, you have DNF, which is the, package, the, the packaging tool of uh, Fedora. And on the right hand side, you have the, the installer, 
which is specific to, to Fedora. And you can see this, this installer is translated in many languages, and this is very convenient for the users. So these are the two worlds that uh, we contribute to as a Fedora translation community. So how do we do that? This is very, very, very easy. There's one single page to know about, and it's this one. What you need to know is where's our translation platform, because we put everything that we can translate on this translation platform. You just go, you connect, you translate, and you don't have anyone to ask about. You will see what others are, are doing. You will see the list of projects by their name. You will identify if this is the installer of, of Fedora, which is Anaconda. And you can identify if you are translating DNF or the Fedora website, and you know exactly where you are contributing. You have no Fedora accounts, very easy. It will lead you to the place to create a Fedora account. A few information, one CLA to, to, uh, to sign, the contributor license agreement to sign, to confirm that you agree to the, the rules of our community. And if you need some more information, there is a wiki page. This wiki page is the localization team page. It contains hundreds of links about how to join, how to translate using weblates, what is the list of the teams, what are the different roles. It's very easy uh, for you to find information. Of course, uh, you will see some issues and if you see some, you can you can report them to this link. We have a page repository containing uh, our list of tickets. You say, hey, I cannot access this, this project. Uh, I cannot find this thing. You can ask the question there. Or you can use directly the mailing list, the translation mailing, mailing list. In this mailing list, you will reach uh, contributors for all over the world. And the, the few people that are like me, coordinator or admins. But if you want, you can do better. You can try to fully join the Fedora community. There's a little guide, which is much longer than this slide. This slide will just tell you the, the two most important points is, the first one is to ask to add, to join the localization group, which will allow you to be fully part of the Fedora community. It will allow you to edit the wiki, to vote to federal elections. And there are some other places in Fedora where there are some uh, technical limitation to prevent uh, vandalism and, and, and boots. So you need to be at least in one more group than the, that, that the group uh, that say that you signed the contributor license. And so it's, this group has no other meaning. It is useless. It will not give you any uh, superpower or, or anything. It will just allow you to be fully part of the community. And the second thing that is very, very important is introduce yourself. We are all working remotely, not because of the COVID, but because it is open source contribution. We don't really need to be face to face to do, to do our work. Of course, it's better to, to make some projects. It's better to solve some issues. It's more interesting, but most of the times we are far away from each other. So it's very welcome when you send a little a little email that say, hey, hello, I'm Jean-Baptiste, I'm new. My, my nickname is Fedora. In Fedora is Jibek Fed. I'm, I'm in France, I'm in Strasbourg. Uh, where, and uh, this is what I like about Fedora. And this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, I want to try to do that thing. Do someone have the same interest? Can we work together to do it? This is the value of reaching us by email. There is a template that is uh, provided in the LTNN guide. So if you have no inspiration, just take the template. It's totally fine. Then there is our organization. So you can see the federal design team did some, some, some little pandas for us. So a translator in our community can do everything, but a translator cannot create new translation projects or new translation components. There are about 660 people who are identified as translator, and we estimate, Weblate estimated for us, that there are 70 people that are active, which is quite good. There are some co coordinators. Coordinators is one point of contact per language team. So there is one point of contact for the French team, it's me. 
uh, there is one point of contact for the German team. Sometimes there are multiple points of contact because they want to make sure if one is not available, there is at least someone who can answer the question. There is no superpower in being a coordinator. You just are someone that is here reachable for to, to reach for help or to ask on collaborative questions. Hey, I don't know how do we translate this and what's, what's the usage? Uh, how should we do? This coordinator is the right, right person to, to help you. So we have 87 language teams in Fedora. Of course, if there are 70 people active, not all of these teams are active. Some, some languages are, are, are dead in terms of uh, activities. And if you want to take, take the lead and try to translate in this language, just go ahead, very easy, nothing, nothing to, to worry about. And at the end, there are the admin, the, the guys with the superpowers. So I have superpowers, I can create a web laid project. That's all, no other superpower. And we are three people uh, being able to do that. There is myself, Jean-Baptiste, Raphael and Yuri. And all of them are reachable on the, the mailing list. So if, if, you are, uh, if you want to translate something and it's not in web laid, you want to add it, you can join them, but don't worry, there's already a lot to, to translate. And that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. I wanted to keep that presentation very short. I shared, I'm sharing here a few links that may be useful for, for you, that gives you a few, a few stats about what we do, where to find some information. And as we are federal community, we always contribute upstream. We will not fork GNOME translation. We will go in the GNOME translation project and we will contribute there. So the translation is doing the same as uh, the, 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 the value of uh, Fedora upstream first. So thank you very much. I, I hope that you, that you learned something in this meeting. We will continue with the questions answer and, and it's it's your call. So we see someone we added recently to the federal community. So this is Luna. Welcome, Luna. So I did not plan to to make any demonstration of the the translation platform itself. So the Federal Translation Platform looks like this. When you, when you land, you see a component list. Most of the time you will look at your language. So as I translate only in French, this will be French. You will see a long list of projects. You select whatever you want. You see full green, which everything is done. Some, some orange means there is some work to do. So there is like, <laughs> 300 untranslated uh, strings, which is quite a lot of work. And once you go there, you will have the user interface. You will see everything that requires attention. You will be able to translate. We'll see also some suggestion. You see this works and that's all. It's very easy to do. So there will be, there is some guides already available in the internet. Yes, Luna, this is the way to go to find first to, to use untranslated. And also in the web late, when you have uh, the page of your language, you can see the checks, checks. So in your language team, so I think you are translating in Norwegian. You can, you can see here history, which tell you who is doing what. You will see the whole changes in this language but you will also see the failing checks. So these are automated detection that done by Weblate to tell you, oh, you see here the colon is not, not, is not correct. It was in, in a different colon in the source string. So you can go and fix it very, very easily. So it helps you for quite a lot of uh, things and the inconsistent were highlighted before in another talk. It tells you that there are 
one, two, or three times the, the same sentences in multiple projects. And in one project, it was translated one way, and in another project, it was translated another way. Either one, translated, one translation is correct, either they are all wrong, because normally, most of the time, you, say you have the same context for, for short strings. So it should have the same translation. So it's very easy to find some very good, very big mistakes here. And also it will detect when you already translated something and uh, it's not translated in another project, it will help you to go faster. So question, is it possible to have contextual information while doing translation? Thank you, Benjamin. Uh, when you are in the translation platform and you are editing a string, on the right hand side, you have the place where the, the, um, the translation occurs. Either it's one direct link to source code, it will tell you in the upstream source code where is the string you are translating. Either for some projects, like um, the um, typing booster, the, the, the developers can send screenshots about the user interface in English and it, tell, it will tell you the string you are translating is there in the in the screenshot so you will directly see in context what you are translating it's very convenient but it's not all project doing that so who should i contact to correct uh, indonesian plural very good question the first thing would do would be to open a, a ticket in pager and uh, i think the plurals that are used in weblate are coming from cldr and the CLDR is a huge database containing a lot of linguistic related content so that uh, the tools can reuse them. So you don't want to, to, to keep a list of uh, what is the text orientation, what is the date format for each software that you write. So they wrote uh, some definition, standard definition in multiple formats in JSON, in XML, etc. And the upstream project are using it. So Weblate is using uh, the data coming from CLDR and either uh, the plural is wrong in CLDR and we, sh we should fix it upstream. Either this is something specific that requires um, uh, a local modification and we can edit it in our own translation platform. But most of the time the, CLD the CLDR is correct because uh, these are um, linguistic experts defining these, these things. So we can help you to, to put you in contact with them and understanding the process. Because as every international organization, processes can be quite heavy and complex to understand when you don't know it. Okay, I said uh, Norwegian and it was uh, Swedish, sorry, uh, Lena. So I wanted this talk to be short. If you don't have any any other questions, uh, I will I will finish the, the the presentation. Have a nice day, and please please enjoy Fedora community and Fedora operating system.